I love this distinction between uncertainty and risk mm -hmm. and swimming in uncertain waters because it's more important to sort of not have for all the reasons that that can uh, that that conspire to your advantage when you are sort of the only game in town. At the same time, there's a lot of companies that get started, especially out of Stanford, mm -hmm. that are uh, research projects that never actually take off. So if a student is thinking about actually, you know, giving their life to a new venture or a new startup that is in uncertain waters, that's a big, hairy, audacious vision, um, how do they qualify that to know that it's hairy enough to be uncertain, but still um, tenable enough to actually succeed and take off? Yeah, I think it, you know it's so situational to each um, and what a, an individual's risk tolerance is for the time right they're willing to put into something before they see it come to fruition. Um, you know, we at Flagship, when we're launching a new company, we have a very simple framework. You and I talked about this uh, the other day, which is, you know, why this, why now, why us. And it sounds so obvious, but it's actually not that easy to answer those questions incredibly thoughtful. So when you say, why this? Why is the world better five to 10 years from now? Because this exists. Why is it transformationally better? Because by the way, most people forget that in rare circumstance does something become really big, right? You look at YouTube, Google, so it took 10 years before these things were actually big. And so you have to really write the story of the future and convince people, why is this fundamentally necessary? The second thing about why now is you have to ask yourself, it's, it being too early is as good as being wrong, right? And there's a lot of things written on this. Why now? What are the fundamental things that are enabling this to be true now that could not have happened? And then why us? Why are we uniquely the team that should be able to succeed? Who else could be doing this? And why are we the ones? Why is this the combination of people, mindsets, capabilities to make it happen? And I think that's, that's how I would think about it. And I wonder if we can get just tactical on that, just so that we can make that real for the yeah. students. So, because even on the why now, it sounds like there's a sweet spot where you don't want something that is immediate because it's sort of readily right. evident to a bunch of people and you don't have a lot of competition, but also has to be within the strike zone where you can take off. So when you're looking at why now, how do you actually make that determination? And, um, and how do you know if it's actually something that is within that, that sweet spot? Yeah, so I think the why now is what are the accelerators? Because whenever you're going after an idea, if you think about it, I'm also an investor, you know, what is fundamentally creating velocity? What's creating wind at your back? Like what is the new consumer behavior or the new trend? So, you know, when we, I'll give you a good example. When we came up, with the concept of YouTube, we were really focused on replacing linear television. Because we said, why do people sit and watch TV by appointment? Why do they have to be stuck in front of all these ads? And you know, TiVo was kind of around, but you know, it wasn't that convenient. And you still were stuck with when people wanted, and there was limited content, right? There's a few guys in a few places that were deciding what's, who were arbitrating, what kind of content we should watch. You had the huge adoption right, of the web, of mobile, and all of a sudden we had the idea for people to be able to access content anywhere, anytime, and we were able to actually encourage that to flourish. And so, you know, I think you have to write the story of the future. Nobody should be watching linear television or at content or ads. There shouldn't be a limited amount of content created. That just fundamentally makes sense. But if those other things were not true, if the internet was not developing, if processing speeds were not getting better, if you wouldn't be able to access it anytime, anywhere, right, it wouldn't have been as easy to enable that to happen. But is there a certain sweet, in terms of the timing of the roadmap, if you could implement YouTube in the next month, uh, would that have been something that you would have said, oh, that's too easily available? It has to take like 18 months or 36 months for you to actually get great the... I don't think it's a time to get to an MVP. I think it's how does it actually get better with scale? Like if you think about all the really successful companies, there's a flywheel effect. There's a network effect. There's velocity fundamentally enabling it to, to keep learning and get better. Otherwise, someone in an adjacency will just reverse in. Okay. Right, that's what everybody missed about Netflix, right? They started just distributing, right, all those yeah, cassettes DVDs. everywhere, but yeah. they actually had a captive audience. So they were uniquely positioned to pivot and then um, invest into that business in a fundamentally new way. And the networks never saw it coming. 